Good morning, everyone. So this video is going to talk about, uh, well, I guess we can talk about old warrior lists slash how I think this is relevant to uh, me today. So you guys have heard me talk about how to improve video and what parts of the game I thought I was I was not as strong at. And I know I said that list building wasn't my thing. And I also said that it wasn't as important as people made it out to be. I do think it's an important part of the game. I think not only building lists that are strong and can take on multiple matchups, but actually building a list that is good for your play style and how you like to play. Um, I think this is more true in Ninth Age than it was in the past. I remember, especially in the the 8th edition Warhammer ETCs, we didn't get to talk to Europe much as Americans. Um, you know, we didn't see the meta like we do now where we're playing online tournaments and everything and we see lists from all over the country and we have a Discord. Um, and so something like the Triple Pegasus army that was popular in, I don't know, 2014, I think it was my last ETC. That was something that kind of, I had to get from a European and then started playing it and then it worked out, sure. It, it, you know, I did it just like everybody else, but there was always this fear when going to ETC or waiting for ETC that we would miss the meta, that we would we would be so wrong on something that it would just screw us before we even got there. Now, I will say in 8th edition, it was probably a little bit more important. Um, things were a little bit more broken, things were a little bit more skewy, and so missing that meta could be a big thing, and we did it sometimes with some armies, for sure. Um, but in ninth edition, it's not as bad. You know, it's funny because I I talk about how lists don't really matter, yet I spend so much time thinking about lists and thinking about how list plays and how to, quote unquote, perfect a list. Um, and so I've been doing that lately, you know, a lot, like just thinking about lists and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, when it comes to Warriors lists, I mean, I can do most of the... I know a lot of the numbers. I know how much points you have left, how much gaps you have left to fill, and what can fill that. And so I do think there's another video to be made that kind of analyzes how to finish a list. And so when I think about what I'm aiming for in the next year of playing, it's, it's ETC 2022. Hopefully it happens. Hopefully I can go. Hopefully it all works out. And I can only go with that in mind. I mean, when I came back to ninth edition, oh, Jesus, a little over two years ago now, my goal was to go to ETC. Um, it was always my goal to go back. And unfortunately, with the COVID and stuff, it has stopped my chances to to go and and, and play there again. So it's it's this weird like ongoing goal of going back and seeing everybody and playing in the big show again and seeing how I do, and yet. It's still now. It's a whole other year away if I wanted to, which, um, which is fine. I mean, that's just life. But it's also kind of fun in a way because I think practicing for ETC and, and saying I want to be as good as I can when I get there um, is is part of the fun. And so, assuming that I want to play Warriors, uh, which is probably where I'll be, um, I, I still reserve the right to make a new video and couple months and say I don't want to be there um, especially given things changing all the time but my heart says this is what I would want to play assuming I felt they were good enough to to play now they didn't perform well at the last ETC but I don't blame the army for that um, I probably blame a bit of the players uh, not really some of them scored very well probably a bit of the meta maybe um, you know I think when I think back to the Warriors players at ETC, I can tell you at least two of them weren't formal Warhammer players, War Warriors players, right? Wilhelm, who performed the best of all of them, he, he's not a Warriors player. He doesn't play them all the time. He's, he doesn't play a ton of games outside of some tournaments in ETC prep. He, he was given a list. Um, he asked me for a list. I gave him a list. He, he modified it to be what he wanted. He made some pretty good changes and some pretty nice changes. I like it a lot. And um, I don't claim that he stole my list or anything like, because I was using a list that I... It was a German list, or... It was like a, some double Forsaken one. And he turned it into uh, whatever he was now. But, you know, he wasn't... 
he wasn't there developing playing a million warriors list to get to the one that he really wanted and so lately i've been thinking about warriors list and i kind of know what i like right like i it's it's hard for me to ever say I wouldn't play with the Herald. I, I you can give me data that the other you know there's non Heralds that are good lists. I'm sure I know she knows this is pretty good. I just really enjoy using the Herald, and as long as I feel like he's a strong piece, I have no reason personally to stop using him in my list. Um, that being said. Because of some of these strong feelings I have towards some pieces, and, you know, you can go down a rabbit hole of, okay, I need magic in my list, I need scoring, I need, um, I need monsters, I need all these other things, and, and I've gone down that rabbit hole a lot with Warriors, and I'll probably have a video kind of talking about, like, the flow of thought, um, but given that I know I, I like to play with the Herald, like, that's going to be ingrained in me for a while, and I'll probably play him for a long time. And so if I know that I'm going to play with a couple pieces a lot, like Feldrick Elders, as long as they're not, like, 550 points or something, or monsters in general, like, more of an aggressive style, then your list starts to become written for you in some aspects. But I think there are still places where you can do two things. One is just try new shit and see if it works. And two is kind of what I call work backwards, right? So if you have a core of a list, and this has nothing to do with what's on the screen right now, I'll talk about that in a second. If you have like a core of a list, and we'll just use an example today where it's the Herald, the Chariot Mage, and two Elders, right? That, let's just say that's your core. Um, and that's a good bit of points. That's like half your army. You can start saying, okay, well, I know I need special, I mean, I don't need core and scoring, so put in some scoring. Here's maybe some ideas that you absolutely need the core. And and then you're, you start to get to this point where there's probably like 1,500 points left where you can kind of, I mean, you can go kind of different directions, but you can kind of say, all right, you know, a very obvious one would be if you look at Wilhelm's list, Double Elder, Chosen Knights, Mincor, two characters, and he has his Entropic guy, his Entropic Lord on Chariot. That Entropic Lord on Chariot to me has nothing to do with the rest of the list so much. Obviously, he has to pair into it or, or work with it well, and I think it's a good piece. But you could theoretically say, all right, here's all the matchups. You know, here's my typical matchup. Uh, here's a high elf army, here's a dark elf army, here's a demon army, blah, blah, blah. And you can say, okay, I, I know how my army matches up against these. Is there a piece that I can add that augments those matchups in a positive way that I want, right? So I'll give you some quick examples. You might say, oh, I want a Portent Lord, right? And in any, any piece you think of, you're probably going to think of some positives that it has. Oh, I'm going to get a Portent Lord in case I face all those Arena Beasts and those Trolls and whatever else, right? Armor. And then you might also say, well, I'm not that bad versus Trolls because I have a giant flaming unit of Chosen Knights. And say, okay, well, he's not adding as much to this matchup as I want. Or you might say, and this is not necessarily true, you might say, huh, orcs with one troll unit, even without my Chosen Knights, are not as much of a problem. Yes, I can't kill them straight up easily, but I have enough single models and monsters to kind of deal with the army, and I don't need to get better at that matchup. Maybe you say if another example would be, well, if I play High Elves all the time, that's Spear Lord is super annoying for my army. I just can't get him with anything. And then you say, okay, the Entropic guy, the guy Wilhelm takes, he, he fucks that guy up. That guy is garbage. Like, he's nothing versus that Entropic guy. And, and so part of you might say, okay, well, that's the plan. I'm going to take him because High Elves are a tough matchup unless I can deal with the Spear Lord, and he helps me deal with the Spear Lord. And simple as that. So... I think there's something to be said when making lists to, you know, when you're near the end and you're making lists on new recruit, you're looking at all these cool options and, you know, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And then you're, you kind of sit back and think, does it really change anything? You know, if, if you took an item that was super good against beast herds and then no one freaking takes beast herds, well, it doesn't really matter that you have the item, right? It's, or, 
or you have to think about if you think about the ETC terms, right? You could say, I am not good at X matchup, but I'm not going to be good at X matchup really no matter what I take. So don't take anything to make it better and just assume you're not going to get it. And make your other matchups, maybe the, the 10-10s or the, the, the ones that are close, even better. Maybe you know it brings, it brings it up a notch and you can say, okay, this matchup was kind of even, but now it's in my favor. Um, maybe it's my favorite just enough that I'm going to play it. Like, if, if I went off the ETC data, like, Demons played Warriors, like, all the time. Now, they're two of the most popular armies, and I think they're both very strong, and I think they match up pretty well against each other because it's just, it's always like a game, in my opinion, a decent game. And so, with that in mind, maybe you would want to bring a Warriors army that matches up really well against Demons or maybe even other Warriors. And maybe you don't care as much about matching up against, I don't know, Sylvan Elves because you know there's not many people that play them and you know that they're probably not going to want to play you anyway. So why make yourself better? Anyway, that's a whole other video. And what I kind of put on the board is these are four armies I took in the last two years to tournaments before the lockdown. These are all pre-lockdown lists. Um, and one thing you'll find in common is Helm Walls. It's something I haven't ran much in a long time. I have been thinking about it again, so that's partly for this video, but I was talking to people, and I was like, man, you know, I'm so regimented in how I think about armies. I'm like, I'm going to put the Herald, I'm going to put the Chariot guy, because that's like the most efficient magic phase, and then I'm going to, I'm going to take two Elders, because I have to take two Elders, and then I'm going to take min core which is three less units blah 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 and i'm like man i used to not take this shit i used to take like some really fucked up shit random and i had help when i made these lists especially a couple of the other ones where i was it was my first tournament or second tournament but you know i just kind of want to look back and just look at some of the stupid shit and what i would probably say if i was looking at it now um and so if we're going in order, the first list of these that I actually played was this one. So this was at like my second or third tournament. Um, so we still had the Portent Lord, who back then, this guy, I mean, this guy today is like 700 points. A Herald, who was more expensive. The Chariot guy, who I was running today, except I would have a, a Binding Scroll. Uh, a banner of speed envy in it. Wow. You would never see me make this unit nowadays. And I don't even necessarily think it's bad. I just it's just not even something I think of to take. But obviously my chosen lord was was envy, so I think envy back in the day was cheaper, but it also, you know, giving yourself swift stride, reroll ones, and being moving five, six for the guy, it was a great delivery system for him. Obviously, points are way different back then. Things are cheaper or more expensive, and other armies were too, so it's not completely fair. Probably Warriors were a little bit stronger relative to everybody else at the time. Um, but I took a Barb unit just to be. I think I used it as a hero bunker when I didn't want to put my Chosen Lord in the in the, uh, the Envy unit. One Chaff unit. Big ass chosen knights. I remember this was a questionable choice. I don't know why I did envy. I guess rural ones was pretty good on the charge. Just five naked knights, three, four sworn damnation, which was good. One, two, three, four. I had five sworn. Wow. And one whirl. Wow, that's an interesting list. So everything can be portal except the barbs and the and the warhounds. That was something back in the day that was pretty nice. I mean, the chariot technically would take damage, but it didn't matter. I wasn't very good with this army. I, I will say that I can remember some of the games, especially the games I lost, which is I lost one. I lost one and one I lost because, or tied because of time. We only got to like turn four or something, which pissed me off. But I definitely got crushed on one by another Warriors aggro list. And I played it horribly, but I, it's, it's just, I just looked back and was like, this is a list I took and it did, it did fine. And, and I would never think to make this list today. I would say, well, it doesn't have any monsters in it. I would say there's only one chaff piece. And part of me wonders, like, is one Warhound unit enough? Do you need... I mean, none of these lists other than my... One has two chaff in it. Everyone else is one. Interesting. 
I wonder what the cost of that Envy unit is nowadays. I have thought about bringing back the Chosen Lord. Like, I thought of doing something like this, but maybe... I mean, I would want the Elders back, but you'd have to drop shit for it. But, like... Like, is the Chosen Lord poor and good enough to have nowadays? Does he change them? I mean, he never really was bad, right? He never... He never was like this awful piece. It's just people just kind of stopped taking him because he was a lot of points and the lists were faster and maybe you didn't need him. But now, like, there is something in my head to be like, is he is he useful in matchups? And I think it's hard with him sometimes because if you go through, you can always find something he can kill in most armies. And the, the thing is, you have to say, does he kill something you need to be killed that your army can't kill? And does he kill things? Does he do more, as Thomas put it, does he do more good than he does bad, right? For example, if he's really bad versus elders, like he's not good versus elders, does he help the Warriors matchup knowing that he has to avoid the two elders running? I don't know. I don't know. So that was a list I, I ran. It was funny. So these other lists, this is my master's list. We'll talk about that last. So these two are probably the, some of the funnier lists I ran. So this one... I ran a Burning Porn Dragon for a thousand points. A Doom Lord with Dusk Forge and a great weapon. A, a Veilwalker Heirloom guy. 13 Wrath, 10 War. I think this list is like 50 some points over now. A Spike Shield unit, a Shrine. Look at that, just, that's just some random shit. I don't even understand how I. I, I lost one game with this. I lost to double screams. I mean, it's with double screams. It just lists as god awful versus a double scream DC list and snipes. And because I got my dragon killed early. I can't believe I played this list. But it's like one of those lists that's like, it's just. I have trouble fathoming playing this list again. Like mentally. Like, look at me. I can portal like three things, four things reliably a warrior unit, two warrior units, a force unit, and knife, which is fine. I mean, I would have never even thought to, like, bring seven knights anymore. I would just, like, scoff at myself looking at this. Damn, I can't believe I wrote this. I, it's, it's too bad this guy doesn't fit with the Herald and a, a decent mage. Um, there are lists with dragon riders that I think are pretty cool. Um, something like, you can take a pretty cheap Lust Dragon for, like, 735 points and still have the Chariot Guy and the Herald in there. I think it's just a Lust Dragon with Lance and MR3 and Trophy Rack. And it's pretty good. I mean, he has to be your general, which kind of sucks, but he, he's MR3. He's 5 strength, 7 on the charge. The dragon does damage. The dragon stomps. It has a breath weapon. It can flee. Um, it can strider, so it can land in woods. It can land in runes and not care, which is actually a big deal. Um, it has rerolls. I mean, like. Trophy Rack is no joke because, like, you can go into a ranked unit and they pretty much have to challenge you, and they're giving up a res. And if they come back and hit you with another unit, challenge, and then you get another res for it. So I think there is play for a dragon, maybe not this souped up of a dragon, but I just can't. Man, I'm just, it's funny how the things I used to play, and I just did it. I wish I had this kind of inhibition again. I mean, this list up here. I don't know how I made this list and, and thought it was an okay idea. I mean, like I said, it, it worked. I only lo I lost on the, the last table to Travis, so um, so we have another Porton guy. So I, I seem to have liked Porton. I oh, all these have Portons in it. Man, I used to take Porton all the time. I love that item. I've taken a dragon, a dais, a dais, and a, a flying guy. I guess I just didn't give a fuck. Oh, this is the expensive version. Just look at the, this guy. Versus this guy, he went up 60 points. This was the, yeah, this was not, this was long ago, but it wasn't that long ago. I took a Veilwalker guy with Ledger of Souls, so a souped up Alchemy Master. 14 Warriors with Speed, it was meant to be a bunker, like you have this guy, this guy, this guy, and, and a Battle Shrine for a huge unit. Look at the Battle Shrine cost, just like jump around. It's 310 now, I can't believe it was 260 at some point. Um, I took 28 Barb because I'm an idiot. I took one chaff again. If you consider this unit, it's one chaff and then half a chaff and the skinning lashes. 
paired weapons, yep, one, two, three, four scoring, pretty good. One elder. And I took two hell malls with the idea that I was like they're cheap, they're monsters, they will, you know, they have to kill both to get rid of my portals. I can blow up portals. I will say that the whole like putting down and blowing up portals was not a thing. For me at least, like it didn't happen that much. Um if Helmholtz were 260, I'd consider taking them solo again. I mean, they're only 280 now. And I've thought of taking one naked one, for sure. Uh, but it's funny, when I look at this list, I think the fun, I find the most funny is I complain to myself that if I'm going to take a Helmholtz, I want to make sure I have units that can be portaled. I literally have, like, three units here that could be... You will, I have a warrior unit with characters, potentially without characters. And I have a knight unit... And that's the only two that don't take damage. You can't do the flares, they'll get broken up. The shrine can be portal by itself, and the El Seldrex can too. So I have like three and a half units that can be portaled, and yet I took two Hell Malls on the same list. I think that's crazy. Um, and somehow it did damage. But it just goes to show, like, sometimes just taking shit, like, you can make it work. And then we come to probably the most list that's probably... This is my master's list. Um, I think I came fourth. Which was disappointing because I think if I was back, I think if I was playing this army again back in like if I went back in time, I could do even better. I think it was a really good list. Um, and I just look at this list and I'm just like, it kind of has a little bit of everything. This is not far off. I mean, it's far off of what we're playing nowadays, but you know, it has the herald, it has the chariot guy, which we I like. It has three scoring, which at the time I had a little bit of issues with. It had two chaff, though I probably, the Fallen probably could be Warhound. And it had a Flying Fortin Lord. And it had an Elder and, and one Maul. Like, it had a little bit, it had one of everything, right? There's no duplicates here. And I kind of, part of me wants to kind of mimic this style and see if I can make something similar again. Um, this is probably closest to the way I'd like to play Warriors. Um, I could argue in my heart of heart that I want another Feldrake Elder. I think that is, and maybe that's just my own bias of this is what I play nowadays and this is what I think is best. Sort of like when I played the Hellmaw in the beginning, I never played a list without a Hellmaw until I think the lockdown, pretty much. I just always wanted it. And now I'm thinking to myself, you know, <clears throat> do I want it back? And the Helm Wall is one of those pieces where when I look at it on paper, like if you were to show me this list, I'd be like, why the fuck do you have a Helm Wall to it nonetheless with this many units? You know, this one, it, it works. You have four units that can be, and they're pretty significant units, especially like this one. And then this one, again, you have one, two, three, four units plus a Chaos Lord and plus a Herald that can be teleported. So like... These units actually have, these armies actually have models that can be teleported, but I think I overthink how many units you need to teleport. I talked about this in another video where as long as you have solid things to teleport, it's about options. Like, <clears throat> yes, it's an expensive 380 points. It's not cheap at all, but people spend 380 points on a double level four for more spell options. So why, why is spending 380 points on a model that essentially teleports your units around the board. You know, when I think of it like that, which I've never actually said that to myself, <clears throat> because I usually look at this and say that could be a fighting unit. But a fighting unit in the wrong place is worth nothing. Right? That's kind of a deep way to think about it. If you have a fighting unit that's in nowhere land, it's worth nothing. It's, there's no point in having it. Um, it doesn't do anything. It's just dicking around, and, you know, if the Helmaw helps you get a unit from nowhere into something, then you've basically added the value of that unit that you got there. It also allows you to deploy differently, right? If you put a portal on the left side of the board and most of your army on the right, you've now said to the opponent, let's say you deploy first, and, you know, here's the board. Right? If you put a portal like here, I'll just use this here, and your army is deployed, you know, here, normally, like, 
they're free to put something here if, if there's a scenario or something. And now you're saying, hey, listen, there's a portal there. I may just end up over there with something. Think about it, you know. You don't know. It could happen. It could just come and look at your flank. There's a lot of things like that. Um, and so one reason I wanted to look at my old list is not only just to discuss, you know, oh, this was a good list. This was such a good list. It, had, it was pretty, pretty special, in my opinion, of a list. I really like it. Um, the greed guy that flies with porn, it's, again, I, I, I look at some of these expensive characters I bought, and I just think in my head, I'm like, oh, is that is that good value I could get blah, 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 blah for it? And then I think sometimes you just need to invest in a really good piece because he can tip the game and he can do things that other units can't do, right? There's a reason people buy really strong characters and not just, you know, hundreds of units because units are limited by how wide they are, how fast they are, how many models they have to hit, where they can be on the board, everything, right? Like, there's very little reason that you want to be a really large unit. So condensing your army into the, the small, hitty force has a lot of uses. And so I love that, that Chosen Lord guy. His biggest problem was just being sniped like a bitch. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe... If, uh, that's another thing. You got to think about what the meta's like. You know, are people taking a lot of Evo magic again? And with Dark Elves getting access to it, it probably is a little bit more popular. And dealing with that is annoying. Like, do you want to really have a piece that is getting sniped and you have to worry about him? That's another, another discussion. I think, like I said, I think I just want to see these to show that some of my current hangups in list building whether it's the fact that I have to have two chat, or I have to have this, or I have to have this, or I can't have this, or I need five units if I have a home all, blah, 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 blah. That it wasn't like that back in the day. I would just hate shit. And it would probably work, and there's probably a use for it. Like, no one plays the home all anymore. Maybe there's something to be said that if you can build like this, you know, if I go on a little bit of a home all rant at the end of this video, and maybe we'll, we'll get into it um, in another video. You know, people are like, well, if you run a Hellmaw, why would you run Elders and Chosen Knights and Hera? Why would you run fast things with a Hellmaw? And because, right? Because the Hellmaw's real thing is teleporting units. And so if you're teleporting units, why not take a unit whose strength is be or weakness is being slow and teleport that? Because if you teleport a slow unit, you get quote unquote more value. Right? In theory, you get more value from teleporting a slow unit because it couldn't get there to begin with. I think that is semi true. But I think there's, I, I think of it in two ways in my head. One is if your army depends on the Helm All, you, are, you have to keep it alive and people can now block your tokens and, and they can stop you from utilizing it. So, for example, in this in this scenario, right, this is an extreme, but let's just take an example. If my army is a bunch of infantry, they can stand on this portal and stop me from going to it, right? They can stop me from teleporting my unit over there. But if I had, like, a Feldric Elder sitting in front of the portal, it's like, okay, if you step on it, I'm going to kill you with the Elder. If you don't step on it, I'm going to teleport my unit over there if I need to. Because even teleporting to, I mean, Chosen Knights can charge seven, and they're, they're much faster than infantry. But, I mean, still putting a unit, like, magically on somebody's flank, because, like, they still can't do that naturally, right? Like, there's, having people having to deal with, like, that's, it's like a double front, right? If, if you're fast from the front, like, right, how I'm thinking of it is, and this is, you know, this, and, it's been a while since I've played portals, but let's just say, just using an example, right? Here's a, no, this is squares. Should have used, <laughs> I could have opened up a, an army build, or an actual, like, yeah, UB for next time, right? Like, if you're slow, and this is very exaggerated, if you're a very slow infantry unit, they don't, they're not going to care about you, like, threatening them this way. 
I, I, they can just kind of cover the portal and look at it that way. But if you're like super fast knights and you're like, I'm going to either charge you here or I'm going to teleport over here and then be on your flank, like that's, that's multiple threats. Teleporting to somebody's flank is not unique to like slow models. Like imagine if anybody can do that, just appear next to you and be like, oh, this sucks, right? The same with the Herald. Yeah, the Herald's fast. But if you start the Herald on this flank and destroy it, there's something to be said if you can instantly teleport him to the other side to deal with something. You know, there's times where I deploy first versus Travis, and I put my Herald on one side because I'm going to push that flank strongly, and he puts some units that I'd like to kill on the other side. So if I had a portal that could possibly go there, maybe turn two or three, after I've done what I need to do on one side, I just teleport to the other side. Or if the enemy's slow, and, you know, they see all my fast shit here, and, and they're trying to deal with it, and then all of a sudden you teleport half your fast shit to the other side of the board, and now you're surrounding them, right? I think there are, I, I, I want to explore it. I'm not saying it's amazing, but I'm saying the advantages of, of fast and non-portable things might be that it opens up room for your portals to do more because they have to deal with the fast things, right? Some armies just can't beat a Herald, a Chariot Mage, and two Elders. That just messes with a lot of people, period. Like, it's just hard to deal with. So if that's the case, then that opens up, you know, and you're saying, oh, well, my warrior units are slow and, you know, I have trouble getting them into the game. Well, now, all of a sudden, if you have a portal, maybe you can teleport a warrior unit up into the battle and either in front of somebody or to the flank. And maybe that's what you need to kind of tip the battle. Whereas if your whole army is, is infantry moving, they're just going to cover your portals and stop you and, and fuck you up when you come out. So I think there's a play... Sort of how my, I mean, this list, I mean, if you look at it, fast, I mean, what what could be, the only thing slow that teleported was the warriors. Everything else was knights and El, Feldrakes and chariots and chosen lords that flew. My chariot lord flied. I didn't have to teleport him. But I did sometimes because it got him back into the game where I wanted to go. Um, you know, you can only fly 8 inches, 16 inches. That's not everywhere. If you put the portals right, and because you're so fast, you can put your portals in more obscure positions because you're like, I can get one, you can get to the portals faster. That's probably something people un, don't think about. Is like, if you have a portal on this side of the board and your guy's here and you want to teleport to here, you can actually get to that portal and get over there. As far as like infantry units don't have that much options. Like you basically have to put it under them, and then once they teleport, they're gone from it. These guys can get back. You know, there's a lot of turn five that are like, you just teleport everything, whether it's objectives or... I'm going on a teleport rant that I don't want to go on right now. But anyway, thanks for diving back in time with me and looking at old lists. It kind of makes me want to just try new things. And I think at the end of the day, you know, I'm running that weirder, quote-unquote, weirder 10 flares list for this event. And I think that I'm trying to get myself to do that more. Just take it and play three to five games with it, see if you like it. Maybe there's something. Even if you think that three times ten less warriors is the best, try having a big unit of, of guys. Don't sit there. Like, I make a lot of lists that I don't try. And maybe I should start trying weird things. But maybe it's just semi-works. But we will go uh, down another video of that another time. Thanks for listening.